Hi everyone, if you're still watching, it means that your child has made a significant progress thanks to your guidance. So go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back for making it this far. And we're back in the next video series of computational thinking skills. We're just over halfway there in progress. Our next topic today will be on pattern recognition. Pattern re recognition might at first seem easy, but to those who are not as enabled, they might struggle to see patterns when looking at them for the first time. This is exactly why pattern recognition is an essential skill, especially for a digital future where data analytics and artificial intelligence will come in. But aside from these technical aspects, pattern recognition is used in everyday life, as explained later in this video. Doodle will come back again to explain pattern recognition further. In the next set of videos will come from episodes 8 and 9 that you can show to your child. Let's give Doodle the stage. Sheep, ah, fluffy fur. Ah, One hundred and two sheep. Ah, great. One hundred and three sheep. One hundred and four. What happened? Oh, ooh. darn! The wolf woke me up. Ooh. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you all here. I got woken up because of this wolf. He broke the pattern. <sighs> hmm. Do you know what a pattern is? A pattern is a sequence or grouping of the same thing, like apples on an apple tree. That is a grouping pattern. If you don't know yet, Apples only grow on trees. But if you replace one of the apples with something else, like this, then that is unusual. Just like the wolf in my dream. Hmm. Speaking of dreams, I just thought of another pattern to share with you. Night. And day. Day and night is a pattern of sequence. Let me show you why. Night, day, night, day. Night, day, night, day. Can you tell me what comes after day? That's right, kids, night. You know night comes after day because it's a pattern of sequence. All right. Now I'm going to quickly change it back to day. What? Day. 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 Oh, no. The pattern is broken. Uh, well, I'll just go back to sleep. <laughs> Oh, hello, kids. Welcome to the Museum of Patterns. I am making sure everything is in place before we close the museum for the day. So, remember our last lesson with Mr. Wolf and the sheep? Today, I'll be introducing you more about different types of patterns. The Pattern Museum here is the perfect place to show you. Here, follow me. Whew. Sequence and grouping. That's the kind of patterns we'll be seeing today. Let's go take a look. Grouping patterns are similar objects put together. 
Can you think of some examples that are similar? Sequential patterns are grouping patterns that are arranged in a certain order, like this group of flowers. There's two and four and six. They go in a sequence of twos. Every time the pattern increases, they add a two to the current number. What do you think is on this fourth painting, kids? Yes! Eight! Six plus two is eight! Ta-da! That's the next number of the sequence pattern. Patterns are really easy once you get to know which one they belong to. Let's look at the next example. <gasps> oh no! The museum is a mess. The patterns are all over the place. <laughs> oh, kids, will you help me fix the patterns together? Yes! Thank you! Let's go! All right, we have to fill up the missing part of this painting. Can you kids tell me what's missing? Aha! This is a polka dot painting. We have some missing red dots. You kids are smart. <coughs> we are done here. Onwards. All right. We have to fill up the missing part on this painting. Hmm. This looks like a sequence pattern of the alphabet group. Do you know what is missing? Aha! That's right, kids. It's the letter C. Oh, uh, there's one more. Come on! Huh. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this. It's just a group of colorful paintings. Oh, uh, what's this? Ah, the tag of the painting must have dropped. Hmm, which pattern do you think this painting is? Is it sequential or grouping? Hmm, which is it? Uh, oh, that's it! Grouping! The paintings are all the same. That makes it a grouping pattern! <laughs> yes! Great job, everyone. Wait a minute. Hmm. Wow. Now it is also a sequence grouping painting. One, two, three, and four faces. <gasps> Mind blown! The museum will be locked in five minutes. All staff, please leave the building now. Just in time. Thank you for helping us out today, kids. Come on, let's go get some hamburgers. Hello? Anybody? <gasps> Let me out. I'm still in here. After showing the videos to your child, it is now time to play the game Chomp Chomp, which can be accessed through tapping on your buddy in the Buddy Home menu. Just like how everyone feels hungry from time to time, your buddy does too. This is a healthy reminder that living things all need a balanced and healthy diet to live properly. Too much of one thing may lead to adverse side effects. Now back to the game objectives. The objective of the game is to fill up your buddy with the right food that your buddy wants to eat. This can be done by matching three or more puzzle foods by swiping them left, right, up, or down to match them. Pattern recognition is in play here because matching four or more will create power-ups that your child can discover on their own. If the buddy's requests cannot be fulfilled with just one simple move, your child will then need to apply decomposition skills acquired earlier to selectively move food around until the right match can be made. Multiple matches in one single move are called combos which also increases your child's buddy's satisfaction level. With enough skill, experience, and game logic, your child should be able to clear the levels faster and faster over time. For the skill application activity, Doodle will bring your child under the sea to discover how to use their CT skills acquired thus far, to then identify the habitats and the environment of the sea creatures below. Oh, Mr. Crab! 
You left your shell behind. <sighs> oh, well. Hello again, kids. Glad you're here today. Did you see that hermit crab just now? He just left his home behind. Hermit crabs usually stay close to the beach because they're always searching for new and larger shells to put their butt in. Tee <laughs> Today, we'll be talking about aquatic animals and where they live. Yep, aquatic animals are living things that spend most of its life in water. Like fish, for example. Do you know where fish live? <laughs> yes, they live in the sea. But there are other fishes that live in other waters, too. However, we will only be exploring some habitats within the big blue ocean today. Are you excited? Here we go. Here we have the beach. This is where I come every weekend to swim. It is not obvious, but there are many creatures who live or hang out on the beach. Like this guy and this guy here. Many of the creatures swim up to the beach to lay eggs on land. Let's move on to the deeper area. I'm sure some of you have seen or know the fishes that live in the sea. Some are bright and colorful or shiny and beautiful. There are also a lot of big fishes in the sea. Did I mention big? It's bright and lovely and, oh shoot, uh, uh, this is the mysterious part of the ocean. We have been here before, <laughs> remember? When we got lost. Um, <laughs> hey, I know it is dark and scary down here, but do you know there are very spectacular fishes here as well? Wow, the deep, deep sea is really mysterious. Ah, and scary. That's the anglerfish. <laughs> Let's stay away from that guy. So, now that I've told you about the different places fishes and creatures can be in, can you guess where each of these following creatures might live? A viperfish and a sand bubbler crab. Can you tell me where each of these creatures might be found? Right. The scary looking viperfish. Um, <clears throat> he lives in the deep sea. Now, now, that leaves the sand bubbler crab for the beach. Let's try again with these habitat and aquatic animals. Where do you think each of them belong to? Hmm. That whale looks big. That means... No! Yes! The sea! Yes! Remember, the whale is a big creature. That means it can't live near the shallow waters of the beach. What about the clam? That leaves the clam for the beach. That's all for today, everyone. I hope you know how to match the fishes according to their homes. Even if you do not know the answer at times, you may be able to make a pretty good guess based on how they look like or how they might live. You can apply this to many tricky questions. Until then, I'll see you next time. Once the video is over, you may need to engage your child with questions. Like, which habitat did Doodle introduce? Um, how was Doodle able to tell where the animals live? Crabs have legs, so they crawl on the beach. While fish have no legs, but they have fins, so they live in the sea. Another question is, how do you identify different environments? Now, a beach is dry and sandy, while the sea is wet and has no air to breathe in. Other activities include drawing the right animals on the right habitat, or asking your child what patterns they see in the animals that live in a different habitat. Like, how do you distinguish a crab from a fish? Now, I hope that you all will learn something new and have fun with your child about pattern recognition. See you in the next video.